of God. The word of God is God speaking to me now. I have what the word says I have. And I am what the word says I am. My heart is receptive today. My ears are attentive to God's word. I will be blessed. I will be blessed. I will be blessed. I will be blessed. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I'm on number five. Can you just slide it down a little bit? Thank you. Praise the Lord. God is good. Oh, so how many of us know what, what we, we started talking about last week? Greater grace. Amen. Greater grace. So we started talking about greater grace because 2015 is what? Please say it's worth conviction. 2015 is what? Our, Our year of what? Greater, greater grace. grace. Let's say it again. 2015 is what? Our, Our year of Greater grace. Let's say it again. 2015 is our year of greater grace. Let's say it, say it, let's say it one more time. 2015 is our year of greater grace. Now, change the word our, our to mine. You know? So, say 2015 is my year of greater grace. Again. 2015 is my year of greater grace. Praise God. Hallelujah. Remember what I said? We have to do what? We have to believe the word. After we believe it, what, do we, what is it that we do? We receive the word, we believe the word. After we believe the word, what do we have to do? We have to speak the word. Praise the Lord. We have to speak the word. We have to Speak the word. Praise the Lord. We have to speak the word. Why? Because the word is what? Has what? Power. The word has power. To do what? To set free. Praise the Lord. This year has been a great year for us. This year has been a great year for us. It has been a wonderful year. Glory to God. And he that has begun the good work is not done. He's not through with us, yes. Praise the Lord. He's not through with us, yes. Is God through with you? No. God is not through with me, yes. And God is never going to be through with me because I'm expectant. I'm expectant every day. I'm expectant every day. I am expectant every day. D. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. So we started last week as what? As our year of greater grace. So let's turn our Bibles to the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 4. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, from verse 23. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So, from, from verse 23. And being let go, they went to their own company, companions. As the traditional King James says, and they went to their what? To their own company. They went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. All that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. Let me read it in the, in the, the King James. Please say this after me that the word of God has power. The word of God has power to deliver and to set free. So and being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. 
And when they heard this, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth, against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou has anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, we gather together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thy hand to heal, and the signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. All right. Last week we started talking about it. We said that uh, something happened here that led them to pray this prayer, right? You all remember that uh, at the beautiful gates, at the hour of prayer, when um, Peter and John, they were going to pray, and they saw a man that was lame. The Bible says from his mother's womb, daily they put him there, so that he may receive arms from them that are going to the temple. Okay? Now, the Bible says when P -E -E, he stretched forth his hand, you know, hoping to receive arms or to receive gifts in the motherly language, to receive something from them, he stretched forth his hand that, please, give me something. But what did Peter say? Peter said, silver and gold. Remember that silver and gold were the currency in those days, okay? So he said, silver and gold have I known, but such as I have, but such as I have, give I thee. He doesn't have silver and gold, but he, he has something. Okay? You all know that today, you might not have silver and gold, you might not have money in your pocket, but you have something. Who, who do you have? You have got God. Because God can make what is, is not in the pocket, can make it available. That is why our trust should always be in what? In God, not in the material things. Okay? Because material things, they will come what is it that they will do? They will also go. But what, what lasts forever that has been is what? Is God. Praise the Lord. So Peter says, silver and gold, I, I don't have, but such as I have, I give unto you. What did he have? He understood the power that is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like you and I today, we understand. I mean, we, 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 we have the power that is in the name of the Lord Jesus. The name of Jesus has been given unto us, okay, to combat every forces of evil, every forces of darkness that may want to wage war against us. The name belongs to you. The name of Jesus belongs to you, for you to use. Every authority that Christ has is invested in that name. So when we call the name, when we speak the name of Jesus, what is it that we're doing? Is that Jesus himself is there doing what we want him to do through the name. Okay? So please say to your neighbor that the name of Jesus is powerful. Use the name. Say to her or him again that the name of Jesus belongs to you. It's yours. You have the name. Use the name. Praise the Lord. No, we're going to have a teaching about that. There are a lot of things that we're going to teach about. Praise God. Because the word of God is always new every day. Glory to God. I love God's word. All right. So, Peter said, such as I have, I give unto thee. And he said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, rise up and what? And walk. What happened? The man walked. The man began to praise God. The person that couldn't walk before, that was always sitting down. You know, medically speaking, all his muscles, neurons, they were not functioning. You know, the coordination, everything were not work functioning. So that the muscle should be given the man step forward, Back, uh, back steps, everything that he needs to move from one place to the other. Okay? But through the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, strength came to that man. And that man received strength. That was what they had. So after they did it, what happened? There was war. There was um, trouble. 
Now they took the apostles, you know, they threatened them that, you know what, in that name do not teach again. In that name do not say anything again. You know, that was a threat. And remember in those days, you know, when they said don't say anything in that name, not just ordinary threats, they were, they, if they don't make, I mean, make their stand, they can get killed, right? Yes, because it was the time that Christianity was just began. Praise the Lord. But look at something. The Bible says they told them that, look, is it good for us to listen to man or to listen to God? Is it good for us to listen to man or to listen to God? Who do you rather listen to? God. God praise the Lord. So, they, no, no, no. They, they didn't let that stop them. They didn't let them put an end to their ministry. What is it that they do? They went to their own company. Right? Remember we talked about company, good company and bad company last week, right? Good company will always lead you into the right way. Bad company will always do us, lead you into the wrong way. The Bible says, he that will be wise should do what? Should work worth the wise. The Bible says, iron does what? Sharpen it iron. You can't take wood to use it to sharpen what? To sharpen a, a knife. Have you ever seen anyone, anyone like that? You know, you, you have a wood, then you want to sharpen a knife. You take the, <laughs> you sharp, what is happening? The knife is stronger than what? Than the wood. It's going to be cutting through the wood. At the end of the year, fire, man, this knife is not sharpened. Why? Because you are using the wrong thing to sharpen the right thing. So that is why iron sharpened iron. You know, so some of that is wise. When you know that the being wise means you understand that when, for me to keep being wise, I have to do what? I have to keep working with what? With somebody that is wise. But I got a great news for you. The word of God is full of God's wisdom. So a smart person, a wise person, we do what? We always attend to the word. We always listen to the word because that is how he gets wisdom. And guess what? The wisdom of God is not the wisdom of man. You know, the wisdom of man is what can, will, can, and we always bought God. We always go. But the wisdom of God is what? Is everlasting. Please tell your neighbor that the wisdom of God, wisdom is, of God. Everlasting. is everlasting. The wisdom of God wisdom is of God. Ever everlasting. everlasting. So get God's wisdom. Praise the Lord. So the world is full of God's wisdom. It's full of God's wisdom. So we spoke about the company that, it, that we, you and I should keep. Okay? Now, we also said that one of the things that we should realize is that for the grace of God to keep flowing in our lives in 2015, we have to do what? We have to have what? A right company. We talked about that, right? That we have to have a right company. If somebody is going to be pulling you down all the time, all the time, I mean, it's not that you're not working in love. Limit your talk with the person. Okay? Limit your steps to the person. No, you know, you know, you, you, you don't hate. You know that we are children of God. The love of God is what is shared abroad in our hearts. We don't hate. We don't hate. You know, you know, you, you know, oftentimes when we don't understand that the love of God is not in our head, but the love is in our spirits, in our hearts. You remember when the Bible talks about heart, it's not talking about the physical pump. It's talking about the real you that make you to be you. Praise the Lord. The real you that makes you to be you. That makes you to be who you are. Praise the Lord. I remember a particular, um, a particular, a particular um, story that I heard. It was a real story from one of my mentors, Kennedy Hagen, from his book, Love, The Way to Victory. He said there was this woman, he has a mother-in-law. Okay, so um, while the man was preaching, the man, I mean the woman, she is a wife to the pastor that has invited Kennedy Yegi to come and minister in his church. So while they were all sitting, just like I was talking, and he said, Kennedy Yegi said, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts that you shouldn't hate anybody. And, and there's a scripture that says, he that hates his brother is a murderer, murderer, kills. And you all know that hatred is a parent, is a mother towards, to 
murderer. You understand? Is a murder to murderer. Because when people hate people, they can do anything. Because it's, it's, it's like a parent, it's an offspring to every evil work. Offspring to every evil work. Why is it that Iran, why is it that they hate us so much in America? I mean, why is it that they don't like us so much in America? The Iran. Why? Because they hate us. You guys know that? You don't know that? Iran. You all know that? You all know that? Iran. Okay, that's one. What about North Korea? North Korea. You all remember the day of just recent, he was saying Obama should be careful because he can send it inside to the, main, in the U.S. mainland. They hate us. Why? Because of God's blessings upon us in America. The way God has blessed us, they can't fathom it. How is it that this is why I just call it the world superpower? You know, they can't understand that. So the hatred is so much. Is that they just feel that man, everything should be gone off us. But thank God, the covenants of God's blessings is upon this country. You all remember that this country was founded on Christianity. You know, don't worry about what is going on right now. About people who have done so many things, they are not um, taking to how the country began. But you and I are still in this country. The grace of God is still upon this country because you and I are still in this country. You, you all believe that, right? Because in the, in, the, in the time that God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, what did they say? He said, if I can find some righteous people, I will spare the land. Abraham began to do what? To intercede until 10. If Abraham would have said one, I'm pretty sure there was one person there. Who was that person there? Lot. Lot was there. Okay? So, hatred is an offspring to every evil works, which we include that their person that hates that person can go to the extent of killing the other person. But you and I, what is it that we have? We have the love of God. The love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. We don't hate. We are not haters. So the scripture says in 1 John that he that hates his brother is a murderer, which means he can kill. So the man of God now says is what is now said that including he that hates his brethren is a murderer. He now said including mother-in-law. Oh, the woman said, "Oh, really? Including mother-in-law? Yeah, not just any brethren. Including what mother-in-law." So at the end of the day, they went to the house. So they were now talking. They were now talking. So the, the woman now said, Brother Egan, you got me confused today. He said, What happened? Yes, you got me confused. He said, How? He said, Because you call me a murderer. How can I be a killer? Brother Egan said, Well, I didn't say that, that the word of God says it. Well, he said, Well, my mother in law, my mother in law, I hate, I hate, I hate her. I hate her. I hate her. Why they were at the dining table? Brother Egan said, can you look at me and say and check your heart that I hate my mother-in-law and check your heart, what is going on? She said, she said, as she was saying, she said, something is scratching on her inside. Something is scratching her. He said, what is it that is scratching her? The, the Brother Egan said, what is calling your attention is the love of God that is in you. The love of God that is in you. So, the love of God is not shared abroad in our heads. It's not shared abroad in our body. It is shared abroad where? In our spirit, in our hearts. So that is why, even sometimes, when there are a lot of arguments, there are a lot of so many things that are going on, when things are happening, so many things are going on, it is like, within you, something is telling you, no, you're not. No, you're not. That's not you. That's not your nature. That's not your nature. That's not your nature. That's not your nature. That's not who you are. Either man or man. Either man or female. That's not you. Don't do that. Don't do that. Why? That is the love of God. The Bible says the love of God constraineth us. Constraineth us. The constraint means when it's time for us to retaliate evil for evil, to do evil for evil, the love will constrain you. You'll say, no, 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 you can't do that. That is not you. That's, your, that's not your nature. You are from your Father God. Whose nature is love. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
So the good company is good. Praise the Lord. So it is good for us to keep what? To keep good company. At the end of the day, he told her, he said, ask what you are perceiving on your inside. Perceiving on your inside. Which means what? What you are sensing, how you are feeling on your inside, in your heart, about your mother-in-law. The woman now said, yeah. So I don't really hate her. It's just I'm allowing my feelings, my emotions to do what? To override my spirits. Then she began. And she found other things began to work for her. There is miracle. There is miracle. There are miracles of healing, miracles of provision, miracles of supernatural promotion when we allow the love of God that is in our hearts to lead us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Did you all get it? Let me say it again. There are miracles of divine provisions, which could mean financial, healing, in any area when we allow the love of God that is in us to dominate us. Why? Because there is no way that... You know, the scripture says, can we abide in sin and say grace you abound? You know, we're teaching about greater grace, right? You remember last week I said it's, we, are, we are talking to ourselves, right? Why? Because if we want the grace of God to be in greater measure upon our lives, we have to clear this area. You understand what I'm saying? We're irrespective of whatsoever the person has done to you. It was not enough for you to hold that person in your heart. To have an ill feelings against that person. Irrespective of who the person is. Either wife, husband, children, whatever, children, anyone, co-workers, it is not enough. Why? Because the grace of God was shared for you. We don't, we, we, we don't, we, we, this is a service. We don't see this grace that work in our lives. So God expects us to walk in love. God expects us to show favor. God expects us to forgive and forget. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you getting something? Yeah. You know, oftentimes we talk about blessing, 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 blessing. Do you know that the blessings of the, of the Lord, there, there are always two signs to God's blessings. How many of us know that, right? Two signs. God's side and what? And man's side. Which means, what I'm supposed to do if I'm doing it? Because God is a covenant-keeping God. He will keep his own side of the covenant, of the contracts. Praise the Lord. He will. And part of keeping our own side of the covenant is to be willing and obey his word, his voice in every area. Praise the Lord. All right. So they go to their own company and from there they, they began to pray. They prayed. You know, they were they didn't let that deter them. Look at verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were assembled and, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. That's another influence again. They got you remember that in Acts chapter 2. They were filled with the Spirit. They got another feelings again. So when God's filled with the Holy Ghost, there are subsequent re-influence, what we call staying fresh. Praise the Lord. That's another thing right there. Which we, by God's grace, we got a lot of things to cover. Praise God. Now, I'm, I'm glad that before we leave this temple, we will always talk about the Word of God. We always teach about the Word of God. We always have new revelations, new insights in the word, into the Word of God. Praise the Lord. And they speak the Word of God with, with what? With boldness. Remember they prayed. With boldness, they did let the threats, they did let anything that they, the they Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, whatever, they threatened them with, they didn't let, them, they didn't let those ones stop them. What is it that they do? They went on and they prayed. First of all, they went to their own company, good company. Then they, was, they prayed. Praise the Lord. They prayed. And God did what? He answered their prayer. And they speak the word of God with boldness. Hallelujah. Look at verse 32 right now. And with great power. Everybody say great power. Great power. Give the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace. Ooh, 
<laughs> oh, hallelujah. Please say that great grace, great grace, great grace was upon them all. Did it say was upon just few? No. Was upon what? Upon them all. Upon every one of them, including the apostles, including the um, the, the the all all including the apostles, the believers, every one of them, great grace was upon. Now let's camp on this word. When we say great grace is upon them all, upon them all, great grace is upon them all. Now what is grace? Okay, we said last week that grace, grace is God's willingness to use his power and ability. God's willingness, notice that word, willingness, which means God is willing. Willing to use his power. Think about it. God is almighty. You understand? If I'm Bill Gates and I'm willing to use my money, to, to spend my money on you, on your behalf, even though you don't deserve it. Can you just connect with that? At least Bill Gates is one of the richest men in, in the whole world, right? So if Bill Gates now stands up that I'm going to use my money, I am willing that you have a project, you have a house, you have a car, ah, bring all your requests. You don't know him from either, either. You have never seen him before. But he said, I am willing to use what? To use this my money to fulfill every of the requests that you have a multi-billion dollar project. He said, don't worry. I will use all of this my money to fulfill all of your requests. Now, think about God. Is Bill Gates richer than God? No. <laughs> Praise God. Ooh. No one, exactly. No one. Exactly. No one. Hallelujah. No one is richer than God. So if God is not saying that I'm going to shed my grace upon you, I'm going to shed my grace upon you, that not even the, just on a level, that's on a smaller level, but on a greater level in the year 2015, that I am going to make my grace known upon you, which means whatever, anything that you can think of, my grace is available for you in 2015. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you believe that, say amen. Amen. Do you know when we say amen? Amen means what? So shall it be. Hallelujah. Are you glad? That we already agree that nobody is richer than God. So if God is saying in 2015, my grace is going to be upon you in greater measure. In greater measure. Because there are measures of grace. The Bible encourages us to grow in grace. There are measures of grace. So if God is now saying, you know what? This coming year, 2015, my grace is going to be upon you. Upon. Remember that the Bible says, and great grace was upon them all. Great grace. So when God is saying that, you see, in this 2015, greater measure of my grace is going to be upon you. When greater measure is upon you, which means everything that you touch will, what? will prosper. Amen. Things will begin to work for you Amen. in your life, in your business, in your job, in your family. Why? Because of what? The greater grace that is upon you. Oh, Lord. Let's just lift our, up our hands and say this after me. Father, I covet your greater grace upon me in 2015. Lord, let it abound upon me, upon all that belongs to me, upon all that concerns me. Hallelujah. Yeah. No. The grace of God is God's willingness. God's willingness to use his power and ability on our behalf, even though we don't deserve it. The willingness uses power and ability on our behalf, even though we don't deserve it. 
So everything that God is, he said, you know what? I'm going to use it for you. In 2015. Everything that I am, I'm going to unleash it over you in 2015. My power, my anointing, my grace, my ability, my favor, everything that I have to accomplish your 2015 desires, your 2015 projects, I'm going to do what? I'm going to use my grace. In grace and measure to do what? To cause it to happen. Hallelujah. And when the grace of God is upon someone, you will know it. You will know it. If the grace of God is upon someone, you will know it. You will know it. All right, let's just look at this. Let's just look at this. You know, let's just look at this. First of all, what made us to become children of God? To become children of God is grace. It's grace. You all know that in the Garden of Eden, when we, when we, when our forefather, for, 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 for father, the very first father sinned, and our very first mom sinned, what happened? We all sinned. The Bible says, "For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God." Well, we can say, "Well, I'm not. I wasn't in the Garden of Eden. Eden, I didn't sin. So why me? Why? Because your lineage." comes from him and her. So because they sinned, the same thing, the Islamic grace was sinned. But well, thank God for God's grace. Thank God for God's grace. Let's look at Ephesians. You know, sometimes it's always good for us to kind of uh, buttress the word of God. Yes. Yes. Because, uh, yeah, because it's our great, 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 great grandpa. They sinned. Okay, but thank God for the grace of God that has brought us out now. Okay, the, okay, listen to this now. The grace of God now took those sin away. Now made, made us to be what? To be children of God again. That's what the grace did. Praise the Lord. Amen. Ephesians, are you getting something? Yeah. You know, one of the subjects in the Bible that I love so much. One of the subjects, you know, there are a lot of subjects that kind of um, intrigue me, kind of excites me. The subjects are faith, healing, prosperity, love, and grace. Grace. I'm telling you, it's like, Lord, you know, since last week, my heart is praying, Lord. This 2015, Lord, let your grace be upon me in everything that I do. Lord, not just in the, in the smaller measure, but in greater measure, as you have said, Lord. I covet it. I want it. I want it. Because the grace, brethren, the grace of God. Oh, hallelujah. It makes a huge difference in our lives. The grace makes a huge difference in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Please say this after me. Thank you, Father, Thank you, Father for your grace. For grace. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 2, from verse 1. Remember, we asked the question. We said, what made us to be, to be children of God today? Because of his grace. Because of his grace. All right, Ephesians chapter 2, from verse 1. And you, uh, you have uh, he quickened. Now, in some translation, he said, you have it made alive. Okay? Because, because Adam sinned, then the spiritual faculty to communicate with God was gone. They don't have it again. But thank God, because of the grace of God, he made us alive. Who were dead in trespasses and sins? Even, let's even put it this way. I know some of us, we might say, well, um, I don't have a terrible life before I got born again. But, go, hello. Some of us, we know that we had a terrible life when we were in the world. Got terrible life. Did so many bad things, so many evil things. But through the grace of God, we have what we have today. Amen. All right, verse 2. Is that where in time pass, you walked according to the course of this world. 
We don't know left from wrong, from left from right. We just walk through the, the scripture says from through the dictates of their flesh, which means when the flesh says it's cool, it's cool. So they don't have any godly conscience to do the right thing. If the flesh say watch bad things, you go to square they do it, they do it. Do bad things, you just go ahead and do it. And they were sinning against God. Because in trespasses, we were dead in trespasses. We don't know what it is right or not. So we're dead in it. Okay, where in time passes, it walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the ear. You see, that is why when we are praying for we are praying for unbelievers, we should understand that our warfare is not against flesh and blood. Sometimes we wonder, how come this person is behaving this way? How come that person is behaving this way? Sometimes we need a spiritual insight to understand that there is a prince or a power of the devil that is working in that person's life. Okay? That is working in that person's life. That is making that person to behave in a way that we don't expect. That we don't say that it should happen. Because it's the power of the devil. Alright? So that is why we need, when we are trusting God for salvation of the soul of someone, what is it that we should do? We should keep holding on to God's word. We should speak to the devil. That is what? That is stopping them from understanding, from receiving the scriptures. Did somebody understand it? So that is why you're not fighting the person. You're not fighting the person. That is why breaking the powers of the devil over our loved ones so that the gospel will have a free course to their lives is very important. Because they just feel that, well, I just want to do this this way, I want to do this, how I want to go. But a lot of the time, it's not in their own intents. It is not in what they desire, what they will. Deep down, they really want to follow us to the church, they really want to be Christian, but somehow there is the wall. The devil that is stopping them. But you know what? In as much as we keep standing on God's word, we are releasing the word, harvest will come. Please say to your neighbor that harvest of God's word upon our loved ones, they will come. Yes, harvest will come. So please don't give up. Okay? Now, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, the spirit is still working. The spirit is the spirit of disobedience is working. Okay? It's a spirit that doesn't will not allow gospel to go in. Alright, verse 3. Among whom also we had, we all had our conversation. Now, in some translation, it says, let me read it in um, in Amplified. Praise the Lord. Let me read it in Amplified. So that we understand that place very well. Ephesians 2. Glory to God. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. Alright. In Amplified, just um, verse 3. It said among these we as well as you once lived and conducted ourselves in the passions of our hearts in the passions of our hearts our behavior governed by our corrupt sensual nature our behavior governed our behavior governed by our Praise the Lord. Okay. All right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, our behavior governed by our corrupt and sensual nature, obeying the impulses of the flesh. Did you see that? You remember, remember, remember King James says, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and why by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Okay? So he said, among these, in amplifying, as well as you, once lead and conducted yourselves in the passions of our flesh, 
our behavior governed by our corrupt and sensual nature. This is talking about how we used to live, right? How we used to live. He said, obeying the impulses of the flesh. If the flesh says something bad, we just go ahead and we do it. We're not putting the flesh on them. Because that's just, we're dead in trespass and sin. Okay? And the thoughts of the mind, our cravings dictated by our senses and our dark imaginings. Oh, dear Lord. If God should allow us to see the pictures of some, on minds of some people, <laughs> oh, you know, it's like every day he's just gonna. Oh man, if he's, if he's coming this way, you're gonna go this way. But thank God, this how this is how we were before. Are you, I'm going somewhere. Are you getting something now? This is how we were before. Okay, the dark imaginings. We were dead by nature, children of God's wrath, and he and heirs of his indignation. You know, what, which means because we sinned, the wrath of God is supposed to come upon us. You know, the Bible says the wages of sin is what? It's death. So we were doomed for hell. We were doomed to be eternally lost because we sinned. That's what happened. Okay? So that's, that's, that's our judgment. Our judgment is to be eternally doomed, to be eternally condemned. Praise the Lord. Ain't you glad for his grace? Yeah. Ain't you glad for his grace? There is no any man that can pay the penalty of, this, of that sin. That was why Christ has to come as a lamb without sin. Blameless, sinless. The Bible says, him who knew no sin. He didn't do any sin. He didn't commit any sin. Because he was God. You all remember that he was God. When he, was, he was God. He has been with God. So he didn't sin anything. He wasn't in the garden of Eden, nothing. The Bible says, him who knew no sin was made sin for us. Why would God do that? Because of his grace. Because of his grace. Him who knew, knew no sin was made sin for us so that we can become the righteousness of God. The righteous, you know, because we sin, we, didn't, we don't have any right standing with God again. We can't come to him. We can't approach him. We can't call him our father. We don't. Because we have sinned. But because of his grace, you're going to see it right now. Because of his grace. He's a wrath and heirs of his indignation like the rest of mankind. Did you all see that? Like the rest of mankind. So because we sin, so mankind is what? It's for judgments. Please say thank God for God. Say thank God for God. And say thank God for His grace. Look at verse 4. We got born again by the grace of God. We got born again by the grace of God. The grace was shed for us. Look at verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy. Now, the grace of God or the mercy of God is the grace of God at work. You know, mercy talks in there, talk, talks about you show mercy, which means you show kindness. You understand what I'm saying? The kindness of God. The grace of God is the kindness of God working. You know, when we, when we say, you know, one of the definitions of uh, the grace is God is like we have a higher power one bending down to help. Remember that we are not on the same level with God, but God come down in our own level to come down to our level and help us. You know, that was what Jesus did, right? Jesus became what? He became man. He became man so that he might bring us to God. Man, can you all fathom that? He became man so that he might bring us to God. Why? Because of God's grace. But God, who is rich in mercy, in mercy, so the mercy of God is grace, grace of God at work. For his great love, and the love of God is his grace at work. You remember what the Bible says? God so loved the world that he does what? He loves what he gave his only begotten son. So that whosoever believes in him should not perish, 
but have what everlasting life everlasting life that's God's grace father I pray in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you open up you help us to understand this grace of yours oh God in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus that's my prayer for everyone this morning even for those that are listening over the internet yeah the grace of God he said when well, he loved us even when we were dead in sins have quickened us he made us alive when we're dead in sins he quickened us together with Christ you see when Christ died what happened we died with him because his work of his work of the cross it's there is the, what we call identification we were identified with him because those are the things that we should, should happen to us right yes we were supposed to be dead to be eternally lost so when Christ died in the mind of God the Father we died with him Paul says I'm crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but who Christ lives in me Christ lives in me so when Christ died we died with him when he was buried was in the hell we were with him because that's where we were supposed to go he paid the penalty for our sin so when those penalties were met, now he was made alive. On the way to the cross, on the way to the cross, the Bible says, in him that didn't know sin was made to sin. So he was made sin for us. So he was cut off from God. Because the sin nature, he took upon himself. So right now, he's not alive unto God again. Which means, he's not in communication with God again. Right? So, when he died, buried, spent that three of days in hell when the claim of justice was met by him the bible says he was made alive was quickened he was made alive so when christ was made alive we were made alive together with him okay with christ look at what it says it said by grace ye are what by grace ye are what please everybody let's look at that in verse 5 in verse 5 ephesians 2 verse 5 even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ, have made us alive together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. Let's say, by grace ye are saved. By grace ye are saved. So what did all of those things for us? The grace. Can you see how, what the grace can do? Somebody that was already condemned to be eternally lost, already condemned to hell through the grace. The grace brought us back. Not only brought us back, he made us to be what? To be children of God. To be children of the most powerful person in the universe. Of the richest person in the universe. You see what the grace has done? Oh Lord, thank you for your Thank you for your grace. The grace, 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 the grace. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace. That's what the grace has done. Let me give you an illustration. When somebody is in prison, is on death sentence, all of a sudden, they say, the parole board came. He has spent some years there. The parole board came. They say, you know what? I think we're going to give him parole. He was already committed to what? To die. Or let's even put it this way, life sentence. You know, there are people that say well, life sentence without parole, right? Yeah. Some say that we're still eligible for parole after like a certain number of years. Maybe for some reason or the other, things just happen. They say, well, I think let's have a parole board. Let's have the family of the person, the people came. The people that died, I think that's the way it goes, right? Because the family of the pe person that they killed will come if they will want parole to be granted. Am I right? Is, it, is, that, is that the way it always works or sometimes it's not? Huh? No, it doesn't sound No, no, what I'm saying is that the, the family of the person that was killed, I think some of, I mean, maybe like a member of the family will come ask would, would you want us to grant parole i think i think some of the things that we watch in the, in the movie is the replicant of what happens i might not be 100 percent right 
but I mean, not be only saying right, but I believe, I believe that so. I mean, that's, that's the jury, that's the jury one. But after the jury has convicted the person, the person is in prison, maybe for life sentence, he has spent like 10. Huh? Yeah, they, 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 they can come back and also. Yeah, they can appeal it. Huh? Yeah. No, no, not the person appealing, like a parole board. The person can appeal. Parole will reduce when you appeal. Just killing more time that they're not going to execute. No, the parole board can say that, right? They can come back and review if they can give him grant of parole, right? Yeah, exactly. So, but what I'm saying is, he's already condemned to die, right? So all of a sudden, things turn around. I mean, we've heard about people that they were sentenced, even for life prisons, even maybe for death or something like that. Maybe somehow, somehow things come, they review the case, they did the DNA, they found out that he was innocent. We've heard about that. I think there was a guy in California that had spent like 20 or 25 years. After they did the DNA test, they found out that no, he wasn't. He was out. Right. Okay, you can see how things turned around. Okay, for us, at least if I don't know that, this one I know. For, <laughs> for us, we were what? When we sinned, when we weren't children of God, we were meant for what? Hell. That one I know for sure, all right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. We were meant for what? For hell. So there is no any, nothing, no parole board can say, you know what, nothing about that. But Christ did what? He came. Hallelujah. He came. He changed our story. He changed our story forever. We that we were dead in trespasses, in sins. Right now we are what? We are alive unto God. What does it mean to be alive unto God? It means that you have a right standard with God. It means that his spirit is living in you. It means that you are now, you were once belong to him. You, you wear it again, but right now we belong to him. We are alive unto God, which means we can sense his presence in us. His Holy Spirit lives in us. His Holy Spirit can communicate with us. We can say, Abba Father. Abba Father. You know, the word Abba is shows one of the intimates. Intimacy. Daddy, Abba, you know, Daddy, Abba, Daddy. Oh, my very own Father. Which means, makes us to be Intimate with God. Praise God. What did that? The grace of God. You see, you see the grace of God in action? The grace of God in action. In 2015, the grace that is going to be made manifest upon our lives is not something that we desire, that we want for. Do you understand what I'm saying? But God, in his infinite mercy, in his infinite love, I've said, you know what? That year, 2015, is going to be a year that I'm going to favor you guys in a greater measure. Amen. Remember we said that the word that is translated in the Hebrew word and Greek word, grace, also translated law, I mean, favor. Favor. We're talking about unprecedented favor this year. Okay, we saw it. God is saying, I'm not done, I'm not through with you. Year 2015, you're going to see the favor in a greater measure was was um, the mother of Jesus. Please help me out. Was Mary the only woman in that in that series? Was she the only woman? No. The angel came. What did the angel announce to her? He said, "Thou that highly, not just favored, but he said what highly." And let's think. Let's think about it. Was Mary highly favored of God? Yes. yes. That the look at look at Elizabeth when Mary came, he said, "Who is this that the, that the, the, the mother of my Lord Jesus should come unto me, of our Lord Jesus Christ should come unto me?" The mother up until today, Mary is called blessed. Is still called favor, highly favored. That is why the Catholics they say, "Only Mary thou hast." Favored amongst all. Pray for us. We know that we, we don't pray to Holy Mary. Mary was a channel through which Jesus came. He was highly favored for Jesus coming through her. But it is not God. She's not God. She's not. He's not someone to be worshipped. He's not somebody to be getting his, uh, 
He, I mean, her, her emblem, and put it on the rose. No, 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 no. That's that's mis misinterpreted, misrepresented. The only person that we should pray for is our Father God through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mary was a channel through which Christ came. Is not, she's not God. She was. She's not God. Praying to Mary is not. That's not biblical. Okay, but we appreciate the fact that she wasn't the only person in that land, but God chose her. Not just favored, but highly favored her. That was a high favor. That the, the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ, Mary, is mentioned. Not just mentioned that he, she carried him for what? For nine months. Gave birth to him naturally. Okay? So, anyhow, anyhow, if the Lord Jesus Christ had gone to heaven and saw Mary, he's going to say, Mom, <laughs> you know that, right? He, he, the Lord Jesus Christ is Mary's Lord. Don't get me wrong. He's Mary's Lord. He's Mary's Savior. You understand? But, but, but in the earthly conversation, what, she, what, what did the Jesus say going to call her? Huh? Will a mom, a mom will always be mom, right? Yes. You remember I'm saying in the earthly conversation, earthly, the Lord Jesus is our Lord, our, our Savior. But the earthly conversation, in the Bible, Mary is what? They say the mom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Which means he, she was highly favored. Just like God saying, you know what? Now, I we the only person on the universe that God has said in household of faith, Christian Center, that my word for you in 2015 is what? There is going to be a greater favor or greater grace upon you. Are we the only person? No. That's God's favor. That's God's grace. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's just rise up. Oh, glory. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to um, encourage us. Please, we're going to upload this on YouTube. Please listen to this over and over and over and over again for us to appreciate what the grace of God can do. What the grace of God is for us. Hallelujah. Let's just thank him. Let's just thank him. Let's just thank him for his grace. Holy great